1941, the Japanese Imperial Army set its expansionist gaze on the impregnable British colony of Singapore. It was a key component in Japan's quest for control of the Pacific. For the British, it was a defeat as great as Pearl Harbor. The defenders of Singapore, British Air Chief Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham, Far Eastern Commander. His Highness Sir Ibrahim, the Sultan of Johor. Lieutenant General A.E. Percival, British Commander, Malaya. Major General H. Gordon Bennett, commanding the Australians. A mixed force, all but the Sultan defending foreign soil. It is November 1941. The Japanese evacuate their citizens from Singapore. The danger in Asia is explosive and acute. With the fall of France, the Japanese have moved into Indochina, threatening Malaya and the riches of the Indies. But Fortress Singapore is confident and untroubled. On December 1st, the volunteers are mobilized. The Malaya Command garrison brought to second degree readiness. Recruiting stepped up. But no guns go to Singapore's 425,000 Chinese, whose loyalty is not entirely trusted. December 8, 1941, 2.30 a.m., one half hour after Pearl Harbor. Undeclared war and the battle for Singapore begins 500 miles to the north in neighboring Thailand. <laughs> made simultaneous landings on undefended beaches in Thailand and advanced quickly towards the Malay border. In Koh Baru, the battle raged. The 5,000 strong Indian force took the brunt of the attack. At first, under the British officers, they put up a stubborn fight. wave of Japanese swept ashore when the Indians were overrun. General Yamashita had successfully landed his invasion force. As the Japanese army was taking Kotaburu, their air force was en route to the American naval base in Hawaii. Battle of Jitra in Malaya, Percival's men were beaten and in full retreat. The Japanese attack was based on speed, ferocity, and surprise. Malaya had relatively few cities. Uh, the area where they actually landed were just small port towns. It's not like the Philippines where you've got a Manila where potentially you could have had a big urban battle. There was, relatively speaking, little resistance because the British kept pulling back. And of course that was all the advantage of the Japanese. Ironically, the British have engineered the road so well, the Japanese advance with extra speed. Demolition tactics fail to stop the infantry on bicycles. Special construction units rush in to repair bridges for the tanks and trucks to follow. The Japanese have a, a saying, a sort of parable about themselves, particularly males. The, the symbol is the carp, and the carp swims upstream against all obstacles. If it's an obstacle, it just keeps flying, trying. I think there was a carp-like quality to the Japanese advance in Malaya. Meet an obstacle, fight it. But if the British are blowing things up, bring in Korean laborers or whoever to reconstruct the roads at night, and then move your troops along rapidly as you can. Jap fought through the jungles at speed, and they had orders to take no prisoners as they would slow down the advance. A pamphlet issued to all Japanese soldiers said, when you encounter the enemy after landing, think of yourself as an avenger, coming face to face at last with his father's murderer. Here is a man whose death will lighten your heart. By December 9th, 1941, the RAF had lost nearly all its frontline aircraft after Japanese attacks on airfields in Singapore. And the Navy were also defeated after the sinking of the newly commissioned battleship Prince of Wales and the battlecruiser Repulse off the Malay coast. ...is in ruins. The United States Pacific Fleet is still reeling from the two-hour surprise attack at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, just three days earlier. 
with the Japanese making more aggressive moves in the Pacific, British reinforcements are increased in Singapore. Four hours after the first invasion wave, Singapore is bombed. many Japanese soldiers have landed. Rumors circulate. Numbers in the hundreds of thousands. Making the situation worse, enemy planes not only surprise the British forces, but demoralize them as well, because there are no RAF fighters in the air. They were to stand no chance against a decisive and well-organized enemy. With Allied air and naval defenses depleted, Singapore City was quickly surrounded. They had not expected the speed and ferocity of the Japanese troops, who pushed them back to Singapore. By the end of January 1942, an attack on Singapore was imminent. General Arthur Percival deployed his troops in a perimeter defense in Singapore. This meant that every coastline of Singapore was defended. He believed that the Japanese would invade from the northeast and deployed his freshest troops there. On 7th February, the Japanese carried out an attack at Pulau Ubin. This further convinced Lieutenant General Percival to anticipate an attack from the northeast. It was a mistake. In our strategy, we were seriously concerned that the British might spread oil on the waters between Singapore and Johor Bahru, and then set fire to the oil when we tried to cross. If they did that, we knew that crossing the strait to Singapore would be very difficult. But General Yamashita was a very good heart. Yamashita plans an invasion of the northwest coast, defended by Australians, instead of striking at the naval base as the British expect. The Japanese have 13,000 men in barges, pontoons, and collapsible boats. The Australians have only 2,500 men on these beaches. 10.30 p.m., February 8, 1942. Japanese 18th Division started to attack the southwestern coast along Pasa and Jang Ridge. The Japanese were able to penetrate into the defensive line and first Malay Brigade force to withdraw to Bonavista. After being forced to withdraw from the ridge on the 14th of February, new defense positions were hurriedly assigned to the companies in the first Malay Brigade. In the reputable Battle of Brigid Chandu, Company C of Malay Regiment was assigned to defend Brigid Chandu. The company was led by 2nd Lieutenant Adnan Bin Sethi. The company initially fought off a group of Japanese soldiers dressed as Sikhs. However, enemy attacked the company again two hours later in full force. It was the 42 men in the company against 13,000 Japanese troops. What happened on the hill that day can only be described as a massacre, though the company fought their heroic grisly ends. At about 1300 hours, the Japanese broke through and they advanced towards the Alexandra Barracks Hospital. Japanese troops of the 18th Division rushed into the hospital and there netted a total of 323 patients and staff members. Later, Yomashtu again launched into a bluff. He instructed his artillery to keep up their fire, to suggest to the Allies that the Japanese had an unlimited amount of artillery ammunition. Australian and Indian troops. They were to stand no chance against a decisive and well-organized enemy. With Allied air and naval defenses depleted, Singapore City was quickly surrounded. Water supplies were running low, and its one million residents suffered constant Japanese bombardment. 
Late in the day, on February the 15th, 1942, with no options left, British Commander Lieutenant General Arthur Percival raised the white flag. Britain's Prime Minister Winston Churchill called it the worst disaster and greatest capitulation in British history. この王国は、すごく大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大き